All right, welcome back to the Double Play channel where I show you how you can put your money to work in two places at one time by leveraging the cash value of a maximum overfunded life insurance policy. Today, we're going to be digging deep into the Double Play archives again, and we're going to be talking about why you shouldn't use a policy loan when you do the Double Play. This is important because if you don't want to be in trouble with the IRS and you want to keep your business clean, you'll want to tune into the rest of this session. So I'm going to sign off here and we'll pick it up with the video that I recorded about four years ago. So today we're going to be talking about why you shouldn't use a policy loan when you're leveraging the cash value of your life insurance policy for investing in real estate. And when I refer to a policy loan, I'm referring to an, a policy loan from the insurance company. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't leverage the cash value. I'm just saying that you shouldn't do it with a policy loan. So whenever I'm out in the real estate investing forums and I see somebody talking about infinite banking and real estate investing, and I hear them talk about using a policy loan, it becomes pretty clear to me that that person's either not really doing it themselves, or if they are, that they haven't really figured it out that that's not the best way to go about it. So what I'd like to ask everyone right now is if you're doing infinite banking and real estate investing, I'd like to know, did you look at the numbers before you did this? So throughout the videos that I've done, I've touched on different factors that will impact how successful you will be by leveraging the cash value to invest in real estate. One of the first and foremost things that you should do is, is look at the policy design. And I've done videos devoted to life insurance policy design and minimum non-MEC policies for investing in real estate, designed specifically for private banking strategies like the double play. The second thing that we've done is spend some time looking at the policy selection. So whether or not whole life or index universal life is the best tool for the job. And lastly, I've talked about this in previous videos, but I haven't devoted a video specifically to this topic, which is how to access the cash value to get the most bang for the buck. So when you're doing the double play, you need the interest to be tax deductible and policy loan interest is not tax deductible. So the best way to access the cash value of a life insurance policy for the double play is to use a cash value line of credit from a third party bank. When you get a bank loan used for business purpose, that interest should be tax deductible. All right, I just wanted to jump back from the future and update everyone. You know, back when this video was recorded originally, it was 2020 and interest rates were extremely low. And at that time, you could actually get a cash value line of credit from a third party bank for less than what you could get a policy loan for. But if you flash forward four years, we're now in a much higher interest rate climate and policy loans from some companies are still as low as about four and a half percent. But cash value lines of credit are more in line with market rates of interest and with prime being so high and these, these rates of cash value line of credit is typically set at about prime minus half a point. It's quite a disincentive right now to use the cash value line of credit just because of that huge difference in interest rates. So watch the rest, just you know, be careful on how you implement something like this. You'll have to weigh the tax consequences against uh, the deductibility. And I know it may not be immediately obvious how great of a benefit that is, but as I teased in the description for this video, you can triple your investment returns on the outside by utilizing tax deductibility. And I hope to show you that in an example today. So the first thing I want to do is show a numerical example of what the business model looks like when you're using a policy loan when, and the interest is not tax deductible. Then I'm going to follow that up with another business model where the interest is tax deductible and we're going to compare the results. But before we do that, I want to start with just the baseline scenario, which is you taking your money and investing directly in real estate without leveraging the cash value of life insurance policy. So we're going to compare all three scenarios. And lastly, we'll circle back and analyze the results. 
All right, before we get started, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you're notified whenever I put out new videos. And while you're down there, be sure to let me know in the comments section whether or not you're actually utilizing a life insurance policy for your real estate investing, and if you're using a policy loan to do it, or accessing your cash value via a cash value line of credit. And if you are using a policy loan, I'd be really curious to find out, you know, had you run the numbers and looked at the business model for this prior to making your decision to buy a life insurance policy for this purpose. So in this video, we're not gonna be taking as in-depth of a look at life insurance as we have in past videos. But if you're not clear on the concepts of, of permanent life insurance, what the cash value represents, the, what I mean by a maximum overfunded life insurance policy, please go down to the description. I've got a link to my life insurance 101 video. Be sure to watch that. There's also a link to my website where you can download my free life insurance 101 ebook. So my main goal for this video today is to illustrate the significant improvement in performance that you'll see for your double play results by leveraging the cash value using a cash value line of credit versus a policy loan from the insurance company. So as I stated, the best way to access the cash value is to use a cash value line of credit. The problem with using a policy loan is that the interest is not tax deductible. So when you invest in real estate, the entire gain is, is taxable as income to you. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at the baseline scenario, which is just you investing your cash into real estate without leveraging the cash value of a life insurance policy. So this is the baseline scenario that we're going to compare our results against. In each of these examples, I'm going to be assuming an investment of $100,000. And the number is not important here. You can add a zero, take a zero off, divide it in half. I'm just using a big number for illustrative purposes. It makes the math simple. We're assuming that the investment is generating 10% rate of return, that we're in a 40% tax bracket, that for our cash value line of credit or the policy loan, we're borrowing money at a 5% interest rate. So in this first example, it's a very simple example. We're investing $100,000 at 10%. So we're gonna finish up the year with income of, of $10,000. In the 40% tax bracket, the tax on that $10,000 of income is going to be $4,000, which leaves you with an after-tax return of $6,000 or 6% 6 net return. So even when you take your own cash and invest, you still got to take the taxes into account. So your net after-tax rate of return on this scenario is a 6% after-tax return. So if you were taking that gain and reinvesting it the following year, you'd only be reinvesting the $6,000 that you are left with after you paid your taxes. So now we're looking at the double play with the policy loan. And here we're assuming that we've got a life insurance policy that has $100,000 of cash value in it. How we got the $100,000 isn't really that important at this point, just that it's there. But here we're assuming that the cash value is earning a dividend of 6%. So by the end of the year, the $100,000 that's securing the policy loan, the collateral for it, on its own made $6,000. So now the cash value of the life insurance policy at the end of the year is $106,000. But let's get back to the real estate investing. So we took a loan from the insurance company for $100,000. At the end of the year, assuming a 10% return, we finish up with $10,000 in the bank. Since the interest is not tax deductible, we need to pay tax on the entire gain of $10,000. So just as in the earlier example, 40% taxes on a $10,000 worth of income leaves you with $6,000 of after-tax income but we haven't paid off the interest on the loan yet, so we've got to pay back the lender, pay back the insurance company. So in this case, the interest on the loan is $5,000. So after paying the taxes of $4,000 and paying the interest of $5,000, our $10,000 has now turned into $1,000 of net income. So if you take the $1,000 of net income plus the gain on the life insurance policy from the dividends, 
we end up the year with a total gain of $7,000. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the double play using a cash value line of credit. Just as in the last example, we're assuming that the life insurance policy has cash value of at least $100,000 that we can borrow against. Now in this example, we have the same situation on the life insurance side. At the end of the year, there's a 6% dividend, so $6,000 of dividend is credited to the cash value of the life insurance policy. So the policy itself will finish up the year with $106,000 of cash value. But we're going to an outside lender and we're borrowing $100,000 and we're use, utilizing that $100,000 to make the same exact investment that we made in the previous two examples. So at the end of the year, we finish up with $10,000 of income in the bank. And since the interest is now tax deductible as a business expense, we write off the interest and we finish up the year with taxable income of $5,000. In the 40% tax bracket, 40% of $5,000 is $2,000, so we write a check to the IRS for $2,000, and that leaves us with net income of $3,000. If you take that $3,000 of net income and add it to the $6,000 of dividend income that we've got, we finished up the year with a $9,000 total gain compared to the $7,000 total gain from the scenario before. And, and what I really want you to focus on is our gain from the outside business investment activities in the last scenario was only $1,000. Our gain from the outside investment activities in this scenario is $3,000. That's the three times number that I used in my description for this video, my teaser. Now in the past I've talked to people who were disinterested in this strategy because they look at the 1% gain or extra that they could get or even 3% and they, they think of it as not worth the trouble. But what I really want you to focus on here is, is understand the rule of 72. If you take the interest that you can earn on your money and divide that into 72, that's how long it takes for your money to double. So if your money's growing at 9%, nine into 72 is eight years. So in the situation earlier where we've got the cash value being leveraged with a cash value line of credit, and we achieved a 9% after-tax rate of return, our money's doubling every eight years. In the situation where we're investing with our own funds into real estate without the life insurance, we're investing at 6%. Six into 72 is 12. So it takes 12 years for your money to double. So the real question comes down to, would you rather have 85% of your money growing at 9% or 100% of your money growing at 6%. And that's really what we're looking at on this graph. What I wanna do here is, is just isolate that very first premium and not look at the premiums that came after it, or in the case of the real estate only scenario, the, the investments that came after it. So we're looking at just the first year in isolation. So if we assume that we're gonna get 85% cash value to premium, then we're gonna have $85,000 of cash value. Again, that's the reason that I'm using nice round numbers here, is just so that our percentages match our, our dollar amounts closely. The baseline scenario is represented by the yellow line. That's the $100,000 growing at a net after-tax return of 6%. So clearly you can see that you're starting off in the lead, essentially. You've, you've got 100% of your money plus the, the gain at the end of the year. Then we had the scenario where we were leveraging the cash value, utilizing a cash value line of credit. And because we could deduct the interest as a business expense, we were able to achieve a 9% after tax rate of growth. So the green and the blue lines on this curve start off well below the $100,000 that we initially started with, let alone where the real estate only scenario you know, started off with that 6% gain the first year. So our objective here is not only do we have to make up that 15% that we lost, but the true opportunity cost is we have to catch up to where we would have been had we just invested in real estate to begin with. And as you can see here, focusing on the blue line, 
if the interest is not tax deductible, you can see that the blue line is catching up to the real estate only scenario, but it's taking a long time to get there. In fact, even after 15 years, you can tell we're converging with the yellow line, but we still haven't reached it yet after 15 years of doing this. So in the example where we're leveraging the cash value using a cash value line of credit, that's the green line. Well, here we're achieving a 3% bonus on top of what the cash value of the life insurance policy is doing. And you can see that we quickly catch up to the real estate and only scenario. And if we're between the fifth and sixth year, the double play example utilizing the cash value line of credit surpasses the real estate only example and, and never looks back. So even when we compare the double play use, utilizing the policy loan, versus simply taking our own money and investing in real estate, we still did better. You know, a 7% net after-tax return is still better than a 6% net after-tax return. All right. I just wanna point out that in this example, I'm not taking into account the cost of insurance in the future growth. I've accounted for the initial charges that you'd see on the policy at, at the time each premium is paid. So that haircut from 100% of our money to 85%, is accounting for the fees there, but I'm not accounting for the fees on an ongoing basis. And, and quite honestly, each subsequent premium that goes into the policy is going to be handling the fees and expenses for each of those subsequent years. So to a certain extent, the growth that you see here is the growth that you'd see on, on a real policy, assuming that premiums would continue to go into the policy in subsequent years. I wanted to show you what one year looks like in isolation because in the real world, we do have premiums going in year after year. And with each new premium that goes in, while we're catching up to where we would have been had we just invested in real estate directly, each time we put a new premium in, we're taking that 15% haircut. So we're taking a, a step forward and then two steps back. But eventually the compounding interest does take over. It's just that it takes a little bit longer than what I've shown you on that previous slide. But the thing I want you to understand is that it does eventually catch up and cross over right around that fifth to sixth policy year. But when you've got subsequent premiums going in each year, it takes a little bit longer. So in one time that you would definitely want to use a policy loan from the insurance company versus a cash value line of credit is if you're acquiring a property using utilizing leverage. So if you're getting a loan to say fund 80% of the purchase price of a of a house, you may not want to use a cash value line of credit to make the down payment on that house. You know, a lot of times lenders like to see that you've got some skin in the game, so they want to know what the source of funds is for the down payment. And life insurance cash value is a legitimate source of funds, so you can utilize a policy loan for that but utilizing a cash value line of credit would probably not. Um, I mean, you're certainly welcome to try. I've heard different things from my clients, but a cash value line of credit is, is gonna be a red flag for a lender because you're not gonna have any skin in the game. When you have no skin in the game and you're using all other people's money, that's when you achieve an infinite rate of return. And that's one, another advantage of utilizing the double play is that you do set up a scenario where you can have an infinite rate of return on your real estate investing activities. And then the second time that you would wanna use a policy loan is when you retire and you wanna access the cash value to generate tax-free retirement income, a life insurance retirement plan. In fact, in the description down below, I've got a link to the video that I did on life insurance retirement plans and how they work. So be sure to check that out. By utilizing the double play, we're putting our money to work in two places at one time. So we're achieving a superior rate of return. But as you've seen in this presentation, leveraging the cash value via a cash value line of credit is vastly superior to leveraging the cash value via a policy loan from the insurance company. So you can see how long it takes to not only make up that 15% shortfall, but also catch up to where you should have been. So to wrap up, it's important to understand that the double play is a long-term wealth accumulation strategy. You, you don't go into this expecting to hit the ball out of the park. You're taking advantage of the power of compounding interest and interest rate arbitrage in order to achieve a higher rate of growth so that you can 
grow your wealth that much faster over time. So optimizing the way that you do your business is going to have a huge impact on your success utilizing the double play. So I'd like to thank you for watching and again be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.